Thanks for having me up here. I am Matthew McCullough, a frequent speaker on Git, and when uh, flying around, I'm even willing to uh, help people through the aisles, fasten their seatbelts, and know what they need to do in the sake of an emergency. I have an Octocat named after my daughter, but the trouble that we're talking about here today takes two forms, and it has a name. That trouble is named Git. I apologize for having proliferated it so much at this point, because when thinking about it in two forms, when thinking about it from the positive and the negative side, the happy people say it has distributed capabilities and I can work when the network is offline and it's robust, it saves to disk, I can independently version things, I don't need any connectivity at all to make this function. And at the surface that sounds awesome, but I remember back to the time when I had to drive in and go to a cubicle and sit down at that specific terminal to check in code. And there's something nice about those fluorescent lights and that wonderful elevator music that played while I was there. And then the Git proponents say, well, it's fault tolerant and it's, it's network enabled in the sense that you can easily work when it's online or it's off. It's like a mobile device. It caches your results. And this simply means that we can work whether or not we have the network. But I find this, in this hard economic time that we have today, to be a reason to stop buying hardware, which is sick when this economy needs your help the most. <sighs> Sometimes, people. But when you think about the positive side, they then back again say, it's low maintenance, you don't have to really do much with it. Every 5,000 objects, it automatically garbage collects. So in that sense, it's beautiful, it's hands off. It seems like it just basically takes care of itself. But what really that means is it's taking away the opportunity of my friend Terrence, who hopes someday to graduate with an SVN admin job. What's he going to do when he graduates and there's no more SVN to maintain? I don't know. Think about Terrence. They also claim that it's blazing fast and you can commit 3,000 objects. Watch this. Over my tethered device, it goes up into the cloud and seven seconds later, it's beautifully committed and visible on GitHub and the user interface. Can you do that with your version control system? Isn't that fantastic? But you know what? I remember when we could talk uh, for 30 minutes with Clearcase about who was going to win Survivor and I enjoyed that bonding with guys like Tad and Ryan. <sighs> I don't have it anymore. And in fact, then they come back and say it's still fine because it's open source and free and it's all this liberty that we have at a conference like open source embodied in a tool that cross cuts all the possible languages that we might talk about here at a conference like this. But you know what? If you don't fund software development, if you don't give them your hard in dollars, you might not have Clearcase in a few years. And can you imagine what it would be like to live in a world without Clearcase at your disposal? Do you want to live in that world? Yes. They say it's disk conservative. It only takes a small amount of hard disk to store every version ever of every branch that you've ever committed to anyone on the team with any tag. But you know what? In my box is an amazing hard disk, a solid state flash hard disk, and another one in another box with perpendicular bits. And that R&D didn't come from not using disks like wild. So think about what your next disk will be and whether you're ruining that chance with Git. Then, I used to commit a lot of bugs, and one of the things from the proponents of Git, they'd say you could search for bugs and find where the regression happened, and exactly what commit brought that into existence. Isn't that wonderful? You can isolate and find what you did wrong. But I remember the days where my friends, Tad and Ryan, would help support me with 150 comment commits to help drown that bug. So when that engineer wanted to go find it, hope of that was zero, like I wanted it to be. But then they still keep coming back and saying, it's like cats and dogs living together. The compatibility is wonderful. We can talk to Clearcase and to Subversion and Perforce with these conversion back and forth and round tripping utilities, Subversion being the special mark there. But you know what? This is a bridge for them to be using tools covertly that are not approved by the IT organization. And that leads to all kinds of other havoc in every frame. Soon we'll be using libraries. You don't even understand what they are. They claim it's free as in beer as their last one to say it helps in hard times with keeping a minimal budget and really allowing to have a great tool at a small cost that doesn't need maintenance and that helps us all. But I bet you if you keep on this track, one day somebody's even going to take it to the edge saying they're going to have a free operating system and oh my word, I can't even think what that old chaos that'll bring to the table. Do you want that? Do you want a free operating system? I don't think so.
So I ask you, even though I've taught Git for this long, reconsider, salvage it. For the sake of the people in college today, stop using Git. You're ruining their lives, their hopes, their dreams, their future, and it needs to end now. Thank you. Yeah.